Mr. Sawit, you sell uh, you sell newspaper subscriptions. Is this correct? Oh, oh yes, newspapers. Yes. That sounds like <laughs> that sounds like a lying man if ever I heard one. Mr. Sawit, you may proceed with your testimony. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it was strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her, lying there, a woman, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. No, she died between 4 and 5. She died before between 4 and 5. I have, can I object? The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? He did. I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the... Wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawit used was one of those. I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Electricity to Ms. Stone's building was out from noon to six on the day of the crime. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, uh, yes, Your Honor? You may begin your cross-examination. Examination. All right, right, this is it, the real deal. What exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you expose the lies of the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? Y he was lying? Pay attention, right? Pay attention, he was lying through his teeth. Your client is innocent, right? And that witness must have lied in his testimony. You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. Find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face! Um, okay. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. Because that is bull crap. Ha-ha! You found the body at 1 p.m., you're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, uh... No body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three hour gap? Oh, uh, that, uh, uh. This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. Mr. Sawit, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, uh, well, I, gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It's probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. During a blackout? Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. It was a blackout. She couldn't have been watching TV. It's not possible. You heard her voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Oh, I will. Blackout record. Ha. You're full of crap. Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. Gah! The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sawit? No, I... I find it quite puzzling myself. Ah! Wait, I remember now. The court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That, and you seem rather distraught. M -m -m My apologies, Your Honor. It must have been the shock of finding the body. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Actually, I didn't hear the time. Uh, I, I, I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. This is the murderer. He doesn't even remember what he killed her with. He killed her with a tiny statue. And now he's saying it was a clock. That must have been what I saw. You saw a clock. 
I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. Objection! Wait just a moment. This isn't a clock. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was the statue. And as you can see, there's no clock in the statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? What? You with your objections and your evidence? Just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sawit. Hey, I, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Now he's trying to say it's a clock. Your Honor, if I may, as the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. Well, does it look like it's working? The neck is a switch. It just tilted and it says the time out loud. But he said he saw the time, not hear the time. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. You're full of crap, Mr. Payne. So, the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Okay, maybe. Maybe, but he said he saw the time. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with his testimony now? Yes, Your Honor. There is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. The witness knew it was a clock because he, he had to have gone into the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it. Prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Please continue, Mr. Wright. The sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face! <laughs> Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, uh, I, I, that, that, I, I, I never, look, I, the clock, I heard, no, I mean, I saw, saw, yeah! Oh, he ripped his hair off! Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, I hate you! It was him, I tell you, I saw him! He killed her and he should burn! Burn! Give him death! I don't think that's gonna happen. Ripped his hair clean off his head. Your Honor, a moment please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright, you claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I'd better think it through carefully. The sound Mr. Sawit heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply try sounding the clock, I guess? Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? Because if he busted it, it'll still say one, maybe? I ask the court to listen very carefully. Beep. I think it's 825. Did it just say, I think it's 825? Did it just say, I think? That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of death. Oh, so, Mr. Sawit, try to talk your way out of this one. Ah! <laughs> Ah! You forgot one thing! Uh oh, what's he talking about now? Well, it may seem like this, that clock is running three hours slow. It proves nothing! How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. He's right. How am I going to prove that? Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. This means I cannot let you indict the witness, unfortunately. This ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sawit. I come all the way down here to testify and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal, a criminal. You lawyers are all slime. I almost had him. Sorry, Larry, I failed you. Not so fast, Mr. Sawit. Mia, I, I mean Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. 
Why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason, and you'll have your proof. Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Presumably because it was bashed against Cindy's freaking noggin? That would be my guess. Wait, maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ah, tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. All I've got is the pass. It's got to be the passport. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. Oh, so when it said 1 o'clock, it wasn't even 1 p.m. It was 1 a.m. Oh, the clock wasn't 3 hours slow. It was 9 hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sawit? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? Oh, Mr. Saw It. I was saying Saw Wit. Mr. Saw It. Mr. Did It. Puns coming in hot, man. He's gonna have a straight up heart attack. Oh my god, did he just die? Did he just die of rabies in the court? Order! Order! Order, I say! This case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness? Uh, he. Uh... He was arrested and has been taken away, your honor. Mr. Wright, I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly and find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, your honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts. Not guilty, yeah! Larry, you did it! And with that, this court is adjourned. It turns out that Frank Sawit was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day, when Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sawit let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sawit grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. I still can't believe we won. Right! Good job in there! Congratulations! I owe it all to you. Not at all. Not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over. Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Well, I mean, besides the fact that his girlfriend slash ex is dead. Uh, Nick, don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. I, wait, no. I mean, bad, 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 bad. Larry, you're innocent. The, the, the case is closed. But, but my Cindy Wendy's gone, man. Gone forever. Congratulations, Harry. <laughs> Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts innocent. <laughs> um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner? Movie? My treat. Oh no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Here, take this. It's a present. I don't want the murder weapon. Are you kidding me? Actually, I made this clock for her. I made her one of her and one for me. Really? You? You made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And... And she was just playing me for a fool. Are you so sure? Exqueeze me? Why is exqueeze me? Why am I looking at the words exqueeze me right now? I've never seen exqueeze me written out in a game before. I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me, it's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Do I? I guess. Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? What about that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. Whatever, she probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Hope that made him feel a little better.
Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, yeah, how about dinner? On me! We'll drink a toast to innocent butts! Yeah! Oh, well, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? And so my first trial came to a date, I mean to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us. Unless you count the clock he gave me up. I didn't know it then, but that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. What? The end? What does that mean? What is that cliffhanger? What is that cliffhanger? What?